Greetings, fellow humans. I'm going to change things up a little bit and hop in front of the camera to deliver a public service announcement to the Linux users out there. Well, some of the Linux users out there. You know who you are, or at least who you aren't. Like so many Linux users, uh, Linux does everything I need except one thing. And that one thing keeps me tethered to Windows. And for me, that one thing was analog video capture. And looks like I'm not in this boat alone. Uh, so when I set up this multimedia studio that I was planning in Linux, um, I went out and looked for applications that let you do video capture. And I found applications that ripped DVDs, uh, that imported digital video, that converted applications that flat out didn't work, GUI front ends for command line applications that should work but didn't have the right options, command line interfaces that had so many options I couldn't think. I feel your pain. So through all this research, what I'm finding is uh, that if you have digital video, uh, whether it's from a DVD or digital camcorder that gives you DVDs or just flat out firewire import from digital, you're good. You're gold as far as Linux is concerned. But a lot of us don't have digital cameras. We have analog cameras. And then there's a the problem of webcams. Here I should note that the quick capture upload method that YouTube offers from their website works fine if you have a video for Linux compatible capture device. Uh, but then again, you run into the problem that let's say you want to edit out an interruption. Spick. Yes, thank you, Spick. Thank you, Spick. Um. <coughs> Can't really do it with a quick capture. So the consensus is that digital video is great and analog users are just out of luck and responses of those I have found on my quest who had any input to, put, to give to this uh, range from mildly upset to moderately distraught. So I hit YouTube and I found a lot of people attempting to cache with Linux with analog devices but not having much luck. I found, I think, the best solution, which really disheartened me, uh, was a guy that figured out how to do screen capture of the window showing his webcam and got about three frames per second with horrific audio sync. Mm. So after a lot of searching, I found a solution and I would like to share that with you so that I can maybe save some of the other Linux noobs out there, the mental anguish that goes along with trying to figure out how to import your video into your lovely little Linux box. So part one of this problem is getting around the command line phobia. Uh, think about it. The big problem with command lines is that there's so many options and you have to tweak so many settings. Under Windows I only had one setting that I ever used with Studio 9 to capture. Uh, so I didn't need those options, I just needed start and stop. Problem number two, lack of a preview window using command line interface. So I watched the video I dump onto my computer from my camera on my camera. So viewing it on the computer too is kind of redundant. As far as webcams, well if I'm going to pan around and do a lot of interesting work with the camera, I'm going to use my camcorder not my webcam. The webcam just kind of sits there on the desk. You get the initial picture and focus and you're good to go for the entire recording. And I found out quite by accident doing this that uh, with at least the Brook Tree capture card that I have, if I leave TV time open, I can go ahead and capture and it works as a preview window. Pretty cool. So first thing, my system stats. I'm running FreeSpire 2, which is basically Ubuntu 7 with Feisty Font and the KDE interface, because I really like KDE. Uh, it's on a P4 2.5 GHz processor with 2 gigs of RAM, nothing spectacular, and a Brooktree 878 TV tuner card for capture. So the first things you are going to need, and this comes with FreeSpire 2, but if you don't happen to have this, link over there. Uh, is mPlayer, and mPlayer comes with a feature, command line driven, called mEncoder, mEncoder, 
ME encoder? Anyway, that's what it is. <clears throat> this is all you're going to need to import the video. If you have a video for Linux compatible capture device, you're good to go now. So one thing you'll notice here is that all the command lines use default audio capture. Uh, so just make sure you have capture enabled from the mixer, which gives you a nice little GUI interface. And then you can select whatever input you want from there. Saves you a lot of hassle of trying to find out what things are enumerated as when you, if you're going to type it into the command line. So all you have to do to make this work is to open a console in the directory where you want to put the clip, paste the command line in, hit enter to start capturing, and control Z to stop, and you're done. If you'll notice, I have to tweak down my audio because right now it's a little hot. So command line one. Uh, this is the one I use for dumping video for my camera. It's high res, it's DivX. I don't re recommend using anything other than DivX because the quality is so good. Uh, you can tweak the resolution and bit rate. I have it set for 640 by 480, 6000 in this example, but if you wanted to say go with DVD resolution, you can up it to 720 by 480, 9800 kilobits. Command line two. This is good, it's lesser quality. Uh, you can use this for internet video. Uh, for optimum YouTube settings, you can also use command line one. You change the resolution to 640 by 480. Uh, bump the bandwidth down to a thousand kilobits per second and you're using the uh, best quality according to the tutorials on YouTube to import video into YouTube. Now command line 3 is a little device tweak that gets you down to my USB camera. Like this. So here we are using the uh, USB webcam and you can see that the uh, quality kind of sucks but hey you know it was a ten dollar refurbished Logitech quick cam and it got the job done for the backup job that was needed so um, so now that we at least know that it'll work and you can use the nifty little configuration script back to the better resolution ah that's better so hopefully you're catching on to this. You come up with your basic settings that you want, and then you can just tweak the resolution, can tweak the bandwidth, uh, and can change the device. And you should have all that you need to go. So what I do is I capture a DVD resolution and bandwidth, and then I open that up and do all my editing and compositing in Cinelera. And when you export from Cinelera, use QuickTime for Linux. Uh, link to a little tutorial about the basics of doing that, but yeah, use QuickTime. Don't try AVI. Don't try any other format, ever. Do not under any circumstances attempt to render a file in AVI or anything other than QuickTime for Linux. For Kanisha's sake, don't do it. Not in Cinelera. Never, never. Don't do it. Trust me. Anyway, right, that was fun. Hopefully it's been a help to some people, and uh, if it has, hey, maybe I'll do some more with some secrets that I've found. So that's it. So for now, back to uh, the family videos.